Hi guys, it seems that loyalist paramilitaries may be threatening a return to violence. Oh, here we go again. Now, this guy, his name is David Campbell. He represents the Loyalist Community Council in Northern Ireland. Uh, Loyalist Unity Council represent organizations such as the UVF, UDA and Red Hand Commando, terrorist organizations on the Loyalist side. Now, the last uh, attack carried out by the UVF, one of the, one of the organizations, is the Lockan Island Massacre in 1994. Uh, where six people were killed and five were injured. The Greysteel Massacre, which was carried out by the UDA, another organization, saw eight killed and 19 injured. That was in 1993. And the Red Hand Commando have been carrying out terrorist attacks up until 2003, it seems. But um, I just want to highlight one gruesome one here. This is 1994. A Protestant woman, Margaret, Margaret Wright, was found dead in the back of an abandoned house in Donegal Avenue, Belfast. She had been beaten and shot by, uh, by a group of UVF Red Hand Commando members who assumed she was a Catholic. Wonderful people. Let's hear what one of the representatives of this organization representing them has to say about the protocol. Credible threat is if unionism and loyalism is continually undermined if the basis of the ceasefires that were agreed in 1994 are undermined. That is where we enter a period of real problems for Northern Ireland, but none of us are contemplating that. We wow, okay, then why the hell did you say that? Why did you say that the ceasefires are being undermined, but nobody is contemplating undermining them? A sort of toss the stone and hide the hand situation. We genuinely, collectively across unionism, want a resolution to this protocol so that we can all move on and start to deliver decent government for Northern well, Ireland. That's slightly at odds with what you said a few days ago. If you don't mind me uh, just reminding you, 10 days ago you told the newsletter, if Geoffrey Donaldson accepts a deal that doesn't meet the DUP's seven tests, Northern Ireland could be in for what you called a difficult summer, potentially. And then you added, you're concerned that, and I quote, elements within those organisations that are much more sceptical would attempt to brush the old leaderships away. I mean, I'm sorry, but that sounds like fighting talk. Well, it's, it's the re real politic of these organisations. The current leaderships have now for 25 years taken their organisations on a significant uh, transformation programme away from paramilitarism. Well, it doesn't sound like they've transformed with the threatening violence, does well, it? Well, there are young Turks in all these organisations who uh, perhaps see opportunities uh, if a vacuum exists. Wow. So he, what he's saying here is that there, these terrorist organisations have been quiet pretty much for the last 25 years and there are people within these organisations, younger, younger people, who have grown up, to give you a bit of context, who have grown up under peace. You know, they have not, they've experienced nothing but a peaceful Northern Ireland and they're being, how can I say, radicalised by the likes of the DUP and other people within unionism who are focusing on the protocol. The DUP set their seven tests, which are just ridiculous. But what, what this is about is, you know, Northern Ireland is under threat. Its place in the union is under threat. The union itself is under threat and the threat is the protocol. Now, of course, I, I don't know David, um, this guy here, David, whether he campaigned for Brexit or voted for Brexit, but it's a bit irrelevant at this stage. Um, we need some honesty. You know, the likes of these loyalist paramilitaries uh, and their representatives in the Northern Ireland Assembly, they wanted Brexit, but they wanted a different type of Brexit than the one that the Tories delivered. They wanted a hard border on the island of Ireland. They didn't get that. And instead of saying, OK, we lost, let's just work with what we have, they're threatening violence once again. This is what he's talking about. When he talks about the young Turks within the organization, he's talking about the older or the older um, veterans of these loyalist paramilitary groups. They're being removed and being replaced by younger, more radical individuals. And they have no qualms, it seems, about returning to violence for, because for them it's something new. 
We said back in 2016, people who understood that Brexit would be a mistake, would be a disaster for Northern Ireland. We said this, things like this would happen. And it was all dismissed as part of Project Fear. And what's so bloody frustrating for me and for people who have a bit of an understanding about Northern Ireland is you have Brexiteers in England who've never even visited Northern Ireland talking about how wonderful Brexit would be. And any concern about Northern Ireland is just scaremongering. Forget about it. You don't know what you're talking about. Northern Ireland will be fine. Don't even mention borders or anything like that. You know, you had Jacob rees talking about electronic borders, things he just pulled out of his rectum. <sighs> this is a concern because these, as he said, these hotheads have never really understood what the situation were like, was like before the Good Friday Agreement. And they're being egged on by sinister elements within politics as well. People who have nothing to lose. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.